It's like a download of something that's already true that your mind knows that you just temporarily forgot. Ignite your best life. Yoga is the spark. Hello, and thank you for listening to the Yoga Hacks podcast where we take yoga off the mat and into the realm of our daily lives. If you've been a longtime listener of the podcast, definitely subscribe or leave a review on iTunes, even if that's not where you usually listen to the show. And if you're on YouTube, I would love it if you gave us a thumbs up and subscribe. Today we're talking about intuition, one of my very, very favorite topics. And this was brought up by Lauren, who's a member of our Uplifted community. And she was asking about how do you differentiate your doubts and maybe sort of like what your mind's telling you compared to your intuition. And in her particular instance, she was doubting something, but she didn't know if it was her intuition telling her no or if it was just regular doubts. And this is such a great, great topic because I think as we go deeper in our yoga practice, we start to get glimmers and glimpses of this deep-seated, deep-rooted intuition that we all have where we really know what's right and true for us. And this is one of the biggest advantages of having a regular, powerful yoga and meditation practice is that we can access this incredible, incredible knowledge within. But even once we start accessing it, it can be challenging because it's not like we only take steps forward as we grow and progress and get to know ourselves better on the path of yoga. It's always like we take a couple steps forward and then two steps back and then five steps forward and then six steps back, right? So it's extremely normal that you may feel like you've had some really strong intuitive insights yet are still maybe questioning and are like, is that really my intuition or is that my mind chatter or something else? So in this podcast, I'm going to try to give you some practical tips. I have at least three practical ones here to help you start differentiating between the analytical mind and that deep intuition, that connectedness, that knowing. And before we go deeper into this topic, I think it's important we together sort of define what we're talking about, uh, define intuition for, for the purposes of our chat here. And to me, and I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below or in the Uplifted group, if you're an Uplifted member on Facebook or the free Facebook group, yoga, H-A-C-K-S, community.com, yogahackscommunity.com. But my definition of intuition is that It's something that's within me, but also outside of me. So when I'm connected to my intuition, I often feel it in my gut, which is what a lot of other Uplifted members said on this thread, that it's like a gut feeling, gut knowing. I also often feel it in my third eye center, which is that space just between and above your eyebrows, the sixth chakra area. And we have great sixth chakra classes, both on YouTube and extended ones in Uplifted. Um, It's usually those two areas, usually third eye or gut uh, feeling, which means it could be almost coming from the intestines, the belly, or even like a knowing deep down in your pelvis. However, I think what's important to talk about is that when you're connecting with your intuition, it's, at least for me, it's not just about this deep inward connection. It's also acknowledging the divine order of the universe and tapping into an intricate knowledge base that's much deeper and more complex than just me as an individual on the on on an individual uh, plane of consciousness let's say so in tantric philosophy we talk about how universe is water and you are a drop meaning that you're made up of the same stuff So you can think of yourself as a drop siloed alone, or you can think of yourself as a drop in the ocean, right? And when we think of ourselves as a drop in the ocean, aka interconnected into this matrix of infinite knowledge and things unfolding at the correct time and often being unexplicable or difficult or sad, but just sort of this knowing that the universe is unfolding in a way that has some sort of 
underlying order to it that you can believe in. And if that sounds really wacky and out there, I'd really encourage you to think, you know, how do you feel at the end of meditation, at the end of Shavasana? Usually that calmness you feel, how you usually feel better after yoga or after meditation is because you're you're tapping into the sense of an underlying order or at least an acceptance of the present order of the way things are right now, which is really powerful. So when I'm feeling connected to my intuition, it's it's like feels right in me and it also feels right as part of something larger and a larger context and part of the, again, I'll call it like the universe's divine plan or if you're religious, you could think of it as God's plan. So there's also an element of it that is extending beyond myself where I feel like that puzzle piece that fits right in the ocean where it's like, yes, this feels right on an intrinsic interior gut level and it also feels right in the context of everything. And I think that's really, really critical. So to me, that's sort of my definition of kind of how and when you know it's your intuition. And then in terms of separating your intuition from your linear or your doubting or your monkey mind or your vritti, as they say in the Yoga Sutras, your mind chatter, some tips here are that when you have an intuitive insight, it's sort of like that feeling, not always, but it sometimes can be like that feeling where if you've ever like misplaced something in your house and then you suddenly remember where it is and it's like an aha moment. Aha moments are often really fast, but it's like, you know, when you, it's like getting a download, you're like, oh, I left it in my pants pocket on the couch, like inside a drawer or something like that, right? You sort of suddenly receive this download. And when your intuition's talking to you, that's, it's sort of that same sensation, but it's often not as fast, right? Like, some, it might be, you might have a gut reaction to something or like a visceral response and know on like a deep cellular level, no or yes. But a lot of times, like especially after yoga and meditation, you're getting that download, that same energetic quality of like remembering where something is, but it's just slower. It's unfolding a little bit more gradually till it's like, oh yes, of course it's there in my pants pocket. Of course, that makes sense. Of course, because that's where I put it yesterday. Of course, because yesterday I was doing X, Y, Z and it fits into this larger context. Okay, if that makes sense. Another thing is like if you forget a word or someone's name and then you suddenly remember it, it's that same sensation of like getting a download. However, I want to be really clear that when this happens in real life, like you, you, you remember it's like in a second. And when it's your intuition coming in and talking to you, it's often a little bit of a slower realization, but it's that same energetic process of like a truth that was buried in your mind or subconscious that you knew previously because we, we, your intuition knows sort of like bubbling to the surface. So that's what, uh, your intuition, uh, realization, insight can feel like. What it doesn't feel like is a story. So that's another, that's my second tip, is that your doubting mind or your linear rational mind usually has a story attached to why something's the way it is, which is why I think the example of like suddenly remembering where you put your keys or suddenly remembering someone's name that you couldn't remember last week is such a good uh, analogy because it's like a download of something that's already true that your mind knows that you just temporarily forgot or, or just got blocked with other stuff. That's very, very different from a piece of knowledge you have that has a story attached to it. For example, if you're doubting that you should maybe take a new job or you have uh, fear around taking the new job so you're not taking it, There's pr you could ask yourself why, right? That's a great thing. Ask yourself why and is it like because my last job that was like this was really terrible? Is it because you're afraid you're going to fail? 
Is it because last time something like this happened, uh, it was extremely challenging or embarrassing for you, right? Like you ask why and there's, there's a story, like there's something deeper. When you ask why to like, you to remembering someone's name or remembering that the keys are like in, in the uh, couch cushion that, where you left them last night, like it's just a fact, right? It's not like something that has this like complex story attached to it, if that makes sense. So one thing you can do when you're trying to discern like, is this intuition or is this like mind chatter a story is to ask that question why and 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 if there is um, an answer (laughs) then it's the thinking linear mind that's creating stories and trying to make sense of our reality and really trying to protect you it's quite sweet um, all the time by telling you you know stories about your reality to try to shape your perceptions to keep you safe that's very, very different from your intu- intuition, which is something that it, you just know on a gut cellular level that makes sense. And this is why it's so important to quiet down to hear this other intuitive voice because it's otherwise really just not accessible to us in daily life. Okay, so my second tip is that you should meditate, <laughs> obviously, and that After meditation is a really great time for that inner knowing to sometimes like bubble to the surface. So it often feels, or you can think of it like, um, again, an inner knowing that bubbles up. So it's something that's already true, has always been true, is just a fact, right? Like you can't rationalize it, right? It's It's just true for you. Um, like when you ask why you're just like I don't know why I just know (laughs) it's just a fact like I just know there's not a story there Um, it's it feels like something bubbling up or rising to the surface Um, often from maybe the lower chakras up through the body it could also just feel like something from the bottom of your mind bubbling up to surface towards maybe that third eye center we talked about it can also feel like a clearing so imagine just like walking into a space that's super foggy, like fog machine dense, you can barely see in front of you or you can barely see your hand in front of your face. And all of a sudden you just take your hands in front of you and you kind of clear that fog and all of a sudden you see something that's just so obvious and makes a lot of sense. So as you come out or finishing meditation, whether it's like this sensation of bubbling up or I call it the sensation of clearing, it's like the mist clears away and suddenly you see something very clearly that you just sort of on an innate level knows to be know to be true and when you ask why you have no explanation other than that you just know that's your intuition Um, and it's something that you also have to quiet down to hear this is why the meditation angle and you know we do the physical asana yoga practice in order to be able to meditate in order to be able to access this this space this knowledge this power um, is is so essential because without it we very rarely quiet down enough to let this bubbling to the surface happen or to let this clearing happen which is a huge pity in my personal opinion so again if you're listening to this probably you have a meditation practice or you're very excited about cultivating one and one of the many many benefits in addition to reduce stress and better memory and just improved health and happiness on a variety of levels is that you get to tap into this innate knowledge it's like a secret that if more people were using uh, who knows how much more success they would have in their life our linear mind is fantastic and we want to use it as a tool but it's only really half the story it can only take us so far we have so much more power beyond just our rational mind and when you start tapping into that power life gets really really interesting but it requires trust it requires patience and it requires the discipline of a practice a daily practice The third tip in terms of really getting in touch and knowing what's intuition and what's not is a lot of the time dreams and visions 
are a sign that it's your intuition because dreams and visions aren't from our linear mind. They're from the other half of our brain, the the non-linear side. Dreams are in pictures and shapes. They often don't make sense. And it's for exactly this reason that if you dream about something or have a very clear vision in a meditation of something, that's usually something that you can trust as your intuition. Now, if it's like a story you're telling yourself while you're meditating or something you're worrying about while you're meditating, now obviously that's a different story because you've gone back into the story, you've gone back into the drama. So I think my biggest piece of advice here is that when you intuitively know something is right, you can't explain it to someone else. You can't answer the why question. While with everything else in life, you usually can answer the why, right? Like, I'm afraid because, oh yeah, like last, it makes me uncomfortable. Last time this happens, you know, X, Y, Z happened or I got hurt or my heart was broken or all these things, but you might just have like a gut feeling that you need to go on a date with this person, even though they're not what you were looking for on paper, and maybe you have some, uh, you know, not so great relationship uh, history, or you're not even looking to date someone, but like when it's that gut feeling, you can't explain why, why you just are, are drawn to them, and that's the sign that it's just usually your, your intuition, and there's maybe something to learn there. And that's the note I want to end on, which is that just because your intuition tells you something does not mean that it's always right. Yes, I'm going to say that again. Just because your intuition is telling you something doesn't mean it's always right. It may mean that your intuition is telling you to pursue that because there is a lesson for you there that's going to greatly contribute to your growth on a mental, spiritual, human level. So you might go on that date and have a relationship with that person following these intuitive instincts. Doesn't mean it's going to work out and they're going to be your soulmate, unfortunately. But it is going to mean that you were really meant to have that experience and the person you're becoming needed to have that experience. And your intuition and the matrix... um, infinite smart destiny of the universe knew that and that it was something that you needed to experience to grow and become stronger so don't get mad at your intuition when when you're like oh you know I really followed my gut on something and it didn't work out the way I had imagined in your in your head or played out the exact way you wanted because your intuition's job is is to guide and protect you and lead you in your dharma, right? Like your your path of learning and growth. It's not there to like guarantee that you're happy all the time or guarantee that everything's going to work out or everyone's going to end up smiling with, you know, life wrapped in a perfectly packaged bow present, you know? <laughs> like that's not your intuition's job. Your intuition is to get you closer and closer to your satnam, right? To your true identity to help you stand up in your true identity when life is getting rough or you have difficult decisions to make. And every time you follow your intuition, even if things don't work out, you're getting a little bit closer to that satnam, your true identity. It's just like peeling back the layers of the onion, like all our yoga practice helps us do so we can be the people we were really meant to be in this plane of consciousness, in this world. And it's exciting. It's not an easy task. But just remember that, like, the worst thing that can happen is you follow follow your intuition and you end up learning a great, great lesson that the universe really wanted you to learn. Or, you know, maybe it wasn't your intuition and it was just kind of a fluke and a mess up. But any time we are challenged or struggle or fall, we end up getting stronger. That's what this practice constantly reminds us of. So keep that in mind. And I hope some of these tips really help you as you start going deeper with your own intuition work. I would love to hear your feedback on this podcast. Again, we have a completely free Facebook group that's amazing that you can join. It's called yoga, H-A-C-K-S, community.com, yoga hacks. 
community.com will redirect you to the Facebook group where we can approve you as a member. And then of course, Uplifted members, thank you so much for listening. And if you want to go deeper with me on all things yoga, meditation, and life, get downloadable versions of all the YouTube classes, plus tons of member-only content, special guests, um, extended series challenges and classes and we obviously have a theme every month that we're working on and going deeper with in terms of yoga philosophy or the sutras and accountability really from, from me and the group it's really special check out uplifted at upliftedyoga.com I look forward to hearing your tips your insights and of course your requests for future podcasts thank you so much for listening so much love Sat Nam, and from my heart to yours, Namaste. This episode was brought to you by Uplifted. Try Brett's membership community for people who want to enrich their life through yoga for free at brettlarkin.com slash uplifted. Yoga obsessed? Join Brett for yoga teacher training at brettlarkin.com slash train. And don't forget to give back. Like this podcast, leave a rating or review. Share this with someone you love. Remember... Now is the time to dedicate yourself to what matters most. From my heart to yours, namaste.